Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am so excited because I have the one and only amazing Lee Richter here with us today. I'm going to share her bio and then I'm going to turn this over to her and she and I are going to have a great discussion. I want you to strap in right now, tune in, don't think about anything other than what you're going to hear from Lee because she and I just talked for a few minutes before we got this started and I'm already blown away. So here is who Lee Richter is. She is an award-winning business innovator and visionary, recognized again, yes, again, by the San Francisco Business Times as one of their top 100 women business leaders in 2019. She's a number one best-selling author and abundant studio producer, member of the Forbes Business Council, and CEO of not one, but multiple six and seven figure companies, including her PR and marketing company, Richter Communications and Design Group. Over the past 24 years, she has run a dozen successful businesses generating over 100 million in sales and loves to mentor other entrepreneurs to model her success. Most importantly, Lee is a loving and devoted wife and mother. With Lee's help, her daughter, Abby, also became a best-selling author at the age of nine, and her husband has become recognized as a global thought leader in the veterinary industry for his expertise in holistic health for pets and wildlife. Lee and her family love to travel and explore the world together, and Lee right now is in Maui. Welcome, Lee. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, I'm in Maui and I'm connecting with you and people from all over the world. And I just love it. We're a global audience. Yes, I love that also. Now, Lee shared with me just before we got started here that she had a life changing situation happen for her. And she's going to tell us a little bit about that. And she and I are going to then get into a discussion about all the tips and insights that she has to share with us. So Lee, give us the scoop. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And I love being connected to women leaders and women entrepreneurs and women just wanting to make a positive impact, not only in their community, but even on the planet. And that's where I am right now. Uh, as we mentioned, my husband's a veterinarian. Oh my God, last year he won the number one holistic veterinarian in the country named by the veterinarians that he was chosen, the chosen one. And it even surprised him because he was 49 when it happened. And usually when people win that award, because they only give one a year, practitioner of the year, usually they're like 60 or 70 years old and they've accomplished so much because they've had like a runway of time to accomplish like their work's passion, right? So at 49 years old, my husband won. And we were in disbelief at first. It took a few days to even get used to the idea of like, wow, he's like at the pinnacle of his career and he's not even 50. It's extraordinary. It just shows how amazing his brain is. is. But to me, it so, told me how many great decisions I've made in my life, right? It taught me, I met this guy when he was 17. I went through 10 years of college with him. We planned a future. We looked into the future. I looked in the future as a visionary. That's what I learned. I looked into the future. And I said, what would be a path that would make this all worth it when we get to the other side? When we get to the point where we're looking back and we've had 33 years together, which we have, what has to happen to make that 33 years worthwhile and happy and wanting to do more? And the reason I was asking that is because in my business right now, I'm doing a thing called a moonshot. And it sounds so funny, but it started in 1961. My friend, Dr. Ben Hardy just wrote about it in his book, Who Not How. So I just read the history of a moonshot. Um, but in 1961, they planned putting a man on the moon and that's why they called it a moonshot. And they did accomplish that. We witnessed it as, uh, as part of our American history, as part of the world history now. It's part of the X Prize history. <laughs> they learned how to put someone on the moon, right? And 
and give a prize for it and really excite the crowds to do crowdsourcing together. So we're in a new pinnacle of everything right now. I see us in a new reinvention phase. And when I look at my husband's career and he's at the top of his game, I'm looking at as the person behind him, the voice, the megaphone telling the world how great he is um, and sharing his expertise and sharing him and his passion. When that's happening, what's the next level? Like now that we've gone 33, what can we do next that's even a bigger impact? So that's where we discovered the moonshot. So I'm working with a group of people putting together the future of animal medicine and how animals literally get their nutrition, how we pay attention to nutrition, how we pay attention to their longevity, their health, how we integrate Eastern and Western medicine. No one way is right, integrative is better. You have more choices and you get to do things that are more proactive. So, wow, what if we apply that to our life? Hey, let's have more choices and be proactive and create a life that we wanna live that we're happy when we get there and look back and we're like, wow, I'm glad I did that. And that's where Maui comes in for me because for 25 years, I've been coming here to Maui. My husband and I have been coming. We came the year of 9-11. We stayed at the Ritz Carlton. We had the whole place to ourselves. It was in December, right before Christmas. It was a magical moment when we're like, every year we got to have this in our life. And so we weaved it in. And now I own a place oceanfront at the Montage in Maui. And why do I do that? So it makes me come back here every year and have that commitment and that feeling. And right here, I'm, for, I'm here for eight weeks. And I have different people coming through and I'll do some business deals. I get up early and do things like calls like I am with you right now. And I connect with the outside world. We could be anywhere because of our Zoom town. We can be anywhere right now. So I'm taking advantage of that. And I'm looking at my husband's life and I'm looking at mine and I'm looking at our 33 years and I'm like, what was the secret sauce to get us to here? And what's the secret sauce that makes me want to re-up for another 25 years to work on a moonshot together? Because that's the reality of my life right now is I'm examining everything. And I'm looking at what are the income streams coming in? What are the things that feed my soul? How do I spend my time? How do I spend my energy? How do I be proactive in my health? That's pretty much what I'm doing right now. I even have my trainer here for all eight weeks. My coach committed. Wow, to that's awesome. You know, we went to, twice to the gym yesterday. In the AM, we did our cardio. And in the PM, we did weights. It was, yeah, that's exactly what we did. And we even swam afterwards <laughs> because I'm like, how about swimming? And so I swam afterwards too. So being committed to health and longevity is part of it. So I'm doing it for animals, but I'm also learning and doing it for myself. I've been improving myself along the way as well. And my husband is in the best health he could be in so many ways. It's funny when the doctor comes back and says, your gut biome is the best it could be. Well, he's a vegan and he's a holistic doctor, but I like that it's proof that what he's doing really works, right? Because even, even the doctor's like, whatever you're doing, keep doing that. Don't change a thing. That's what you, your, your gut biome and your brain are the two things to take care of. <sighs> Think about that, Kathy. That's what you learn in longevity. That's what you learn when you get to the top and you have millions of dollars and you can pay for the best doctors. And you say, yes, I will pay you a hundred grand a year to take care of this Tesla. It's not a car. It's a Tesla, right? It's, it's, it's innovative. <laughs> It costs more and it works easier. Hello, I'm a Tesla. So if it's $116,000 for my car, Jen and I got our Tesla Model X at the same time, right? Like within months of each other, I think we got it. Not ever talking to each other. Um, mine was at Christmas time, actually delivered Christmas Eve. My husband was part of it. But it was $116,000 and I would not get it until I could just pay for it. There's no financing. It's a, can I afford this in my lifestyle? Well, you go get it then. You don't make it a 10 year ball and chain on you, you friggin' make the money and go get it. So when it was time for me to have a Tesla, I did that. Well, the next year I didn't need a Tesla. I already have one, but I did need me to be a Tesla. And I shifted my mindset. And part of the reason I shifted my mindset is you mentioned earlier that I had basically a big step back in my life. And I did truly, it was a horrible setback. It was in the, in my mid thirties of all things, I'm young and vibrant. Gary and I are finally wow. planning a family. He finished 10 years of college. We buy a veterinary hospital. We're doing all these things that are so progressive in our careers. 
I'm working PR and marketing down at Stanford and I have clients like Autodesk and all these really cool, um, you know, people at Harvard and MIT and Stanford are in my, in my, you know, community and we're working and collaborating and I'm learning a lot. I'm even learning like how to bring out WebMD and what is a block. And this is the 1990s, right? In 2000. Well, in 2001, um, I was on my way to Monterey to see a friend of mine. It was actually the woman who introduced me to my husband. And we met in the Bahamas in 1988. We met in the Bahamas <laughs> on spring break in 1988. And the woman who introduced us, her name is Rosemary. And here I, I was going to see Rosemary because Rosemary was mourning the loss of her mom. And she asked her best friends to come in. And I was one of her best friends here in the mainland. She's from the Bahamas, but she had a place in Monterey. And on my way there, someone crossed the double yellow line, hit me head on, and it was more than 110 mile an hour impact. Right. So oh I had a collision to the point where all the traffic stopped and helicopters came in and getting to the hospital was pretty traumatic. And I knew it was going to be traumatic. And I was awake and I actually called my husband, and even told him, like, this is not good. <laughs> like my arm yeah. was broken here, both my legs were broken, my back was broken. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. More than 15 bones. Like it was just, and they took me away by helicopter. And I was awake in the beginning. And I remember chanting, save my leg, save my leg, because there was a chance that I was not gonna be walking out of the hospital. And um, anyway, as everything settled in, as my husband drove an hour to get there, he ended up, they were taking me to Stanford by helicopter and in the air, they realized there was one doctor in San Jose that could save my leg. And it became very dramatic where they turned the helicopter around and went down to San Jose. And it was May 4th, it was May 4th. And it's funny how culture plays into things because it's Cinco de Mayo weekend in San Jose, which is a Latin American community. Oh. So it's absolutely the busiest time ever. It's busier than New Year's Eve. It is Cinco de Mayo in San Jose. So the whole place is like, I don't want to say a circus, but it's very active. <laughs> There's a lot going on. <laughs> and they helicopter me in and I'm awake and I'm yelling, save my leg, save my leg. And my husband shows up and sees me and he sees just, you know, how dramatic it is. And the next eight days, I'm on a ventilator in a coma. They do five surgeries on me. Oh and they're telling gosh. my husband I had a 7% chance to ever live. Oh, and only 7%. So our whole oh life. My gosh. And I was in that hospital. I was in the hospital total more than six months, but that hospital for like the first two months in San Jose. And we lived up in, you know, right near San Francisco. So it was like a 60 minute drive, 70, actually it could be up to an hour and a half if traffic is bad. Mm -hmm. So even someone to come see me was a real big commitment, you know? So the first two months I was there, it was a real, everything was a milestone to get through, a milestone to get through. First thing you have to do is breathe. <laughs> first thing yeah. you have to do after that is, you know, assess this, get this MRI, that. Just so many things. And my husband was my advocate. And my biggest lesson in that moment was, you really need an advocate who knows how to speak the language. And we didn't oh, have yeah. phones then that we could just dial it up. He had to either know it mm -hmm. in his head, know someone or have access to it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on the phone like we do now. But what played the biggest in my recovery was the relationship. Him showing up as an advocate. I had a team of 13 doctors, him showing up, holding them to task, letting them know what the other doctors were doing so they didn't either duplicate. He managed my health and well-being. He understood medicine. He was my advocate. There were things that he said to them, you know, that I can't even believe. Like, you mean we treat animals better than you guys treat humans? I heard, him, oh I heard gosh. him say that. Oh my gosh. I heard him say that. And so he was demanding the best care for me, including if you do this, you need to do that. If you do this, I want to see the culture. And they're like, we don't run mm -hmm. a culture. And he's like, yeah, you do. You run the culture. <laughs> oh. You want to do that? Will you compound this medicine? And they're like, no, we don't do. Oh, yes. Here's the compound pharmacy. Here's where you have to tell them and direct them. If you ask them their protocol and they tell you they have to follow their protocol, but that might not be the best choice for you. So this is why you have to be your own advocate for your own medical. You have to integrate. I recommend to everyone because I see firsthand with animals, they respond without their brain saying yes or no. They just respond naturally. Their brain doesn't get in the way. We have brain mm -hmm. bias, as you know, you have people in front of mm -hmm. you. You can say the same thing to two people and one of them takes it and says, yay, that's a great idea. And the other one says, really, do I have to? You're like, wait a <laughs> second, 
I said the same thing to both of you. How could you have that different response, right? Uh -huh. But it's how their brain takes it, perceives it, and then decides what action to take. And their action they're taking is based on where they're comfortable or uncomfortable. And our job is, as leaders, is to give people hope for a bigger future, right? So you and I, we're the gateway. You're giving people opportunities, right? You're giving them job opportunities. You're giving them 1% mind shifts. You're giving mm -hmm. them the things that you need to take the first step. That's what happened in the hospital. My husband was managing every next step. Just like you do with your team, you're like, we're the experts. And we know it's not just one thing to do. You put it on your project list, like manage this project. And you're like, well, we come in with our Asana or whatever it is. And we're, we have a hundred steps on how to execute that. Right now I'm running a challenge. And the first time we ran a challenge, it was a hundred steps in Asana. And now it's more like 900 steps in Asana. <laughs> because yeah. we so many deep dive things and we help the audience. Now there's thousands. I mean, there's more than 10,000 people in that group. We have 35,000 event planners, but more than 10,000 just on that challenge. And so wow. the first time we did it, we had 400 and tried it out. So that's why it started somewhere. And now it's grown to like, we're experts in that space. It'll be a seven figure launch in five days. Why? Because we know the steps and we know how the audience shows up and we know how to serve them and we know how to make them feel important. And we have the step-by-step -step guide how to do it, right? And each mm -hmm. time it's better and we can predict what's going to happen so we have to be prepared yet we'll be not only prepared we'll be prepared and dazzled so that's what jen kev is doing right now our friend jen she's doing a challenge yeah. and i think uh -huh. she's there helping her and watching yep. that like be a student everyone go there watch what she's doing how does she bring genius to people and show up like that in your passion for your people too and that's what I'm doing in the pet industry. And I'm working with my husband on this moonshot. And we're looking at the next 25 years together on how do we, in it, how do we share integrative best longevity and health for animals? Like, how do we share that along with the technology to create a moonshot together, making a huge global difference in a positive way mm. and yeah. pay attention to animals effects on the planet. So now we have a gateway where people can join us when they're they're paying attention to best health for animals and best health for our planet at the same time. And those people, that's the magic pill for me is finding those people that are that passionate about it and they have the technology or they have the innovation to add to it. And now I get to mix that with my husband's expertise and his validation from his community that he's the man, right? He is the person, he is the one. <laughs> And by the way, he has a lot of women that work with him. He's the only man doctor in the office. I'm, look, I'm like, well, both the chiropractor, the acupuncturist, the, our manager who does the hyperbaric oxygen, everyone that works around him, almost everyone. There's two guys, I think, that work there. Um, it's a team of leaders that want to show up. And what they want to do is be genius in animal health science and, and do things that are impactful and things that we can instill in our life every day. And then when I look at that, I'm saying, you could do that in any single company. Think about your customer. Think about how you want to connect with them, how you want to show up, how you want to create a positive impact and something you want to still do in 25 years, like a 25 year moonshot. What's your moonshot? What is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to make an impact? You know, and now I get to do it because I really want to do it, not because I have to do it. No one's assigning it to me. It's not a school project. It's not, oh, my God, you have to, or you've arrived, this is your next, it's, no, I get to choose it. I get to choose it. So Lee, when you were in that car accident, had you already started businesses? Had you already had a su successful business? Where were you in your business trajectory? So I, my initial career was with Merrill Lynch in, in the 1980s. I was graduating college actually. And they came to my college campus and they did a thing called a disc profile. And when you did the disc profile, the companies that were there would look for their good matches. And I was 21 and Merrill Lynch came and they said, we want you, <laughs> you're a perfect match for us. So I worked for them. I got series seven license. I became a stockbroker. And for 14 years, I was in the financial industries. And I learned that piece of, you know, business, which was really a I was very fortunate. Number one, I don't think you can get in like that. Number two, I was at a time where 
you really learn things to do your job. It wasn't just you were thrown in the job and you were a salesperson. We mm-hmm. literally like, we took classes from Morton School of Business that were made for us. We had coaches such as Lou Holtz and, and Global Figures ah. now. But back then, wow. he was teaching us discipline. And, and what they learned at Merrill Lynch mm-hmm. is that if they hired the football players, they were disciplined first, and then they were able to hang with the schedule. So what they were doing uh-huh. was instilling that discipline in us because they knew it would help, right? Well, there were 50 of us chosen to come together and have this like really intense two-year learning package together. And Wharton School of Business created it. The coaches delivered it, teachers delivered it, and we learned it together. And those just don't happen the same. If anything, it's going to be online. It's not going to be the same. And I think back, like how fortunate I was, I had that financial business background because it taught me skills that I could use now. And even last year, I was taking online classes at Wharton of classes I took back then and just taking the refresher of what what do they say now? Is it the same education? And really, it was the same education, except technology was added in. But most of that yeah. already was learning. So out of that, out that, I started finance. Out of that, it was I'm sorry. Business too. While we were in college, I was already an entrepreneur. I had a business um, called Two Sisters with my best friend. And in the morning before school started, 7 a.m., we were out making $30 an hour, which back then was a lot. That would be like making. That's a lot of money. Yeah. I know. And I would just do 10 hours a week and I'd make enough to live on pretty much the whole month, but then I'd have extra money to do stuff like go to Grateful Dead shows. So as I'm wearing my tie, you can see. (laughs) And what were the two sisters? What did you guys do? What was your service? Um, Oh, this was great. We would go to Costco and get the muffins, the dozen muffins, four blueberry, four whatever, and then four chocolate. The ones in the middle were either like poppy seed or sometimes apple spice or sometimes pumpkin. It just depended. But there was always chocolate, there was always blueberry, and then four some else. And we would individually wrap them. We had licenses, we had business licenses. It was my company, I had a business license. So my best friend Lisa and I, we would do that. We would take literally like one of those wicker baskets and we would fill it with sliced bagels, individual cream cheese, and these muffins. And then uh-huh. we're like, where is it that they're not, they don't have access to a store? Well, it was the, all the car dealerships. All the car dealerships, there were no stores around them. So we would uh-huh. go. We would go car dealer to car dealer to car dealer. And then I would just keep back stock in my, in my car and we would restock it. And we would walk in and whatever we had, most of the time, the owner, if they saw me, they'd be like, I'll buy the whole thing. Just leave it. And they'd be like, wow. Give me $100. and then I'd go to the next dealer, <laughs> fill up the basket. Awesome. So I started realizing, and I would only, I learned not to go every day. If you go every day that they're like, oh, I don't need it. I had it. But if I go every other day, they're looking forward to me. So, yeah, and, so I I that. That. and then it got to the point where we got, got so busy. We had two separate lines. Lisa took one and then I took one. And my husband, Gary, would get up before school and help me before vet school. He'd be up helping me sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was a whole nother world. But I was being entrepreneur and we made a lot of money and we did a lot of things like fly first class to Grateful Dead shows. That's what we wanted to do at the time. Yeah, and we went to street awesome. teeth and fish and everything was around music and tickets and Life was yeah. simple then, but we had this vision of the future. We always had, a, I was setting the vision and he was getting the education in veterinary medicine. I'm like, what if we mix my business and your veterinary skills together? What can we do? And he's like, Ooh, we can have a vet hospital. We can make this kind of change. We can integrate Eastern and Western. And so um, while he was in vet school, he learned from someone the difference in acupuncture when there was a horse that was worth, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars because they run thor- thoroughbreds there and they do really highly skilled things with horses in Florida, in Ocala, which is right near Gainesville, where we went for University of Florida. And so here's Gary, like in graduate school and then vet school, and um, he's paying attention. Well, this one horse, he was on a round of Chinese medicine and he, and there was this horse that all these different divisions tried to save inside the veterinary school. So all these different pieces of medicine came in and, you know, someone did their, their piece and then the next, and then everyone said, I can't figure out how to save this horse. They brought in experts and doctors from Penn state and from other hospitals. And even they came in, they're like, we can't do it. But on Gary's round, there was a Chinese medicine doctor, I believe his name's Dr. Yang. And he came in and did acupuncture on the horse. And in 24 hours, the horse was fine and up and walking. Wow. And he saw firsthand, he's like, mind blown. There is something yeah. to this. 
and he saw the, the, all the notes and all the line of doctors that came in and tried to do something. And he did the impossible, what no one even thought was possible. They were getting ready to put the horse down. And I want to oh say gosh. quarter million dollar horse, but in my mind at the time, that was the value was like, this is yeah. so big. And so for about five years, he put it aside. There wasn't a way to keep learning Chinese medicine. They didn't really have many rounds. Here he was on the one round they had. So mm -hmm. a few years later, we were at a veterinary conference and I was there for management. Our daughter was like one year old. My husband was there as Mr. Mom. Here we are at the veterinary <laughs> conference because I want to go to the management classes. And he's like, I don't even need to go because I kind of know this stuff now. Uh -huh. <laughs> but on day three, he saw on the schedule, Dr. Yang. And he's like, oh, wait, I see this doctor. He goes, can I use your pass? Because it's Lee Richter, which could be male or female, which comes in handy yeah. times. <laughs> my name is Linda Lee. My, my actual name is Linda Lee Richter. And at Merrill Lynch, I became Lee Richter because it was more advantageous for me in my career. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's funny that's tied into that piece. Um, but Gary, my husband, Gary, knew me as I was at Merrill Lynch. And so we already had a relationship when I was like in Merrill Lynch, in her career, doing these extraordinary things, working, walk, working with the Wharton group, working with um, the coaches, being in New York, being in the Twin Towers in New York, frankly, like. I was in the Twin Towers oh. every day for a month at a time. Wow. And yeah, it was kind of like now a surreal life that I had that experience. Right? Yeah. So anyway, my husband, Gary, was part of me building the better future. He allowed me to be the visionary and say, how about and what if? And then eventually what happened through my car accident was while I was in the hospital, Gary came to me with a story and I was laying on my back and I had a broken back. I couldn't move. And he came to me with a story where he was just pumped up and walking around. And at the time he was working emergency at the vet hospital in Berkeley, California. And it was great because he was honing his skills. I was in the hospital. He would work there at night and then he'd come be with me all day. It was like a beautiful, beautiful way for us to be. Right. And, um, when he was at the hospital, he learned so many things and he learned about relationships and he learned just how to be and not to be. And one of the things he always knew is he had an oath to the animals. And this one day someone came in with an animal and they couldn't afford services. And the hospital's like, well, then we can't serve you. And my husband's like, but my oath is I have to help that animal. And so there was a real line there. And he came to me in the hospital and he was pacing like, what do I do? I feel my hands are tied. Like I have to listen to the company, but at the same time, my oath is to that animal and I cannot let the animal die. I need to take care. Of like he really meant it. And I said, well, mm -hmm. this is the time to have your own practice. Then that's the only place that you can make the rules. And so in his heart of hearts, he's like, but there's only three practices in the whole Bay area. I even would want because he worked emergency. He got to see everything coming through. And there were three other doctors aligned with him that did wow. medicine, who thought about integrative medicine, who thought about the client first, who would, a sign of a good doctor is when they do send you to a specialist for something. Oh, interesting. Because they want you to have a person who only does that. So say you need your eyes looked at or whatever. He could look at mm -hmm. them. Sure, I learned in mm -hmm. the medical school and I know it this much, but that mm -hmm. person, that's all they do. So a sign of a good doctor right. is referring you to a better doctor. And they're not saying better in everything. They're saying, I'm the gateway for the best choice for you. Mm -hmm. That goes back mm -hmm. to my doctor and me being a Tesla. As yeah. soon as I said, doctor, here's $116,000, same as my Tesla. You have that budget to fine tune me. Mm -hmm. Number one, he used almost all of it in a year. No. Number two, he sent me for labs so he could see inside. Number three, mm -hmm. he sent me the best doctors, including himself, made me go to Dallas three times. Number four, he integrated things in there to pay attention to my mitochondria, to my telomeres, ah, pay yeah. attention to what I'm allergic to, what I can and cannot have, what time is best for me to eat, when do I do my training, how much training, what do I have to do, where should my heart rate be, how's my brain functioning, what's best to feed my brain, what's best to feed my gut biome. My gut biome is really good because Gary's my husband and he does most of the cooking. Which comes How much age. younger do you feel, Lee, after that year of treating your body like a Tesla? That is such a good question because, first of all, I released a lot of weight and um, releasing it meant it didn't need to serve me anymore because part of what I did was fine tune my brain and figure out where was that weight coming from and why was it staying. So part of it was genetics. Part of it was chemistry experiment. 
And part of it was my habits and part was my mindset. So once I dialed mm -hmm. those in, but through him, <clears throat> he is the Tesla mechanic designer. Like he's like the medical doctor who gets how all the systems work, right? He gets how the brain, body, and spirit works. And he did a few things for me. One, he said to me, he goes, you know, your genetics, you are an athlete. You are an athlete. So I'm going to be treating you like an athlete, which is why I have my trainer with me. Because my brain says, I want to be on the beach with a margarita or a pina colada. But <laughs> work up to that and get it as a reward and you haven't earned it yet. Mm, mm. But he's my <laughs> And if not, I'd definitely be down there. So what I learned is how my brain works. And what my brain works is I want to be around positive people. I want to have opportunities to flourish. I want people to feel better at the end of our conversation. Almost always at the end of a conversation, my, my job I'm feeling is I want them to say, what can we do next? Or how can we talk? <laughs> Here's how you, yeah. impact me. I started, I started mentioning to people, you want to know how to really tell me how I impacted you, put it on my LinkedIn page, go in there and make one of those. This is how the mentored me and impacted me because now I'm realizing if I ever doubt my power and how I have an effect, I could just go read those. They're all in the same place. And that's a great idea. When I read them, I, I love that because those are the people who see me and then being seen and being heard and hearing words of affirmation. When I need the boost, I get to go there. I'm like, wait, that feels really good. And mm -hmm. it's funny because one of the people I mentored last year was Gino Wickman. He wrote the book, uh, Traction, and then he wrote the book Leap. And I was mentoring him on the release of Leap. And he even asked, can I take you to lunch? So so you can teach me some things. And I'm like, sitting at lunch across from him, I'm like, I want to be clear. I am mentoring you, Gino Wickman. He's like, yes, you are. And then he took two, three pages of notes. I had someone else in there who's running a billion dollar company who said it was the most impactful day of the year for him. He goes, wow. I learned so much. He asked, can I watch you mentor Gino? And I'm like, yes, come on in. And we all had lunch together, sat in the boardroom at Dan Sullivan's office. And he took notes in front of me. And he did everything that he wanted to do that felt good for him. And I felt happy for him. And he said, can I send you my book? Can you read it? And I read cover to cover. Um, I had the manuscripts. I read it the whole thing before the next meeting. I stayed up to like one in the morning and just read it. But I loved it. And I thought it was inspirational. I actually told him he did a great job. And here's some ideas. So the thing that I'm mentioning about that, you never know when it's your time to be a mentor. And that's my joy. My joy is pouring into other people. I see it with Dan Sullivan and Joe Polish with me and others. And I see that I naturally do it in return. I even do it for Joe Polish and Dan Sullivan, which is <laughs> the joy of- You know, Lee, one of the things that I'm noticing with, you have so many amazing stories. One of the things I'm noticing that I just absolutely love about the way you live your life is you incorporate fun in with work always, it sounds like. Because it's, you're talking about mentoring all these people and you guys go to out to eat at great places or you're having some fun somewhere else while you're doing that. Is that purposeful? It's more than purposeful. Well, I just mentioned Joe Polish is one of my mentors. And just last week, he had me on his radio show on his podcast, I Love Marketing. And in that podcast, we talked about a whole bunch of things. But behind the scenes, I had my team creating a whiteboard with all the notes of the speech. And the first thing they put on the top was ELF, easy, lucrative, and fun. And they said, Ooh, I love it. easy, lucrative, and fun, because that's what Joe has taught me is put it through that. Everything I do is it easy, lucrative, and fun. If it is, then I continue to do it. If it's not, figure out how to make it easy, lucrative, and fun, and maybe I'll do it. And if not, forget it. I'm not doing it. Why do that? I could be in Maui. I could, and actually, I love my, that. My I highlight adopt that. Now, yeah, easy, lucrative, <laughs> and fun. So here's why I mentioned the whiteboard is because I, and I'll send it to you, Kathy. I'll text it to you so you have it. I sent the whiteboard to Joe and Joe wrote back. He goes, hey, Lee, can you TM the easy, lucrative, and fun? Because we had it trademarked. I said, damn straight. Good for you. But also I love doing business with smart people. He's like, I'm creating a movement that I want everyone to have easy, lucrative, and fun. I'm going to own it. So it goes yeah, back to him. He's the point of origin. But that's a smart person. He came back. He goes, I love that whiteboard. I want to use it. Can I have a TM next to it? I'm like, you got it. Now, do you think he'll have it to make the whiteboards before the, you know, for the rest of his meetings? Probably. 
<laughs> Probably, right. yeah. So it's Probably. my subtle way of saying uh, it's a thank you present that's useful and doesn't collect dust and doesn't give you pounds, right? So when he gets the whiteboard, yeah. I'll see if I can find it. Um, when he gets the whiteboard, he gets the gift. He gets to share it because it's his, but he wanted to share it so much that he made me put a T on, on it. That's how I knew he really wanted to share it. Yeah. Right? It's, a, it's a little cherry on top, both for me and for him. Yeah. So um, I like that part. I like being easy, lucrative and fun. Oh, I love that so much. And while you're looking that up, I just want to tell you before our podcast interview today, I went and looked at all your websites and your LinkedIn and everything I could find about you. And, um, you know, I'd already looked at your stuff before, but I wanted a refresher. And I was looking at your pictures and I thought, oh, she looks like she's such a fun person and she looks like she's in good health. And then when you and I got on here, I thought she's 10 years younger than those pictures. Look. What yeah, has changed? And I wanted to eventually get to that. And I'm so glad you brought up what has changed because Lee, you, you look amazing. You look so youthful. Funny that I went for a swim this morning. So my hair was wet and really, I wasn't thinking about like what I was going to be like on camera too much because I just, oh, wanted- you, uh, you, well, you look amazing and you look so youthful. That's why I ask how young you feel, how much younger you I know, feel. You know, you there's a couple things so that come in handy. Number one, the minute I shifted my mindset and thought of me as a Tesla and made money, not an option. I said mm-hmm. to him, yes to everything. I got a Carol bike, C-A-R-O-L. It's a bike that's an AI bike. So it, you race yourself. My oh, trainer wow. in there is like, here's what you're going to do. You're going to do 30 sprints in the next 10 minutes. I'm like, I am? He's like, yes, you are. <laughs> okay. Now I could do 60 of them. And now I look forward to it. Now it reminds me of, hey, when I was roller skating and I was a teenager, this is how I felt. We're oh, having those conversations. So cool. He goes, you just made my week. And I'm like, I'm glad yeah. it makes you happy that I can do this. But yeah. having the accountability partner, having the doctor giving me the step-by-step that's customized to me. Is it mm-hmm. worth the investment? Yeah, one of my tests is called a Zoomer, Z-O-O-M-E-R, Zoomer test. Mm-hmm. It tells you your gut biome. It tells you what you can and cannot eat based on what's your body having reactions to it, whether it's mild or medium or not at all, right? Now, mm-hmm. I had like 850 things I can eat unlimited had no effect on me. Caffeine is one of them, which makes a lot of people jealous. I can have caffeine. I'm oh, sure. that would make me jealous if I was not able to have it because I love caffeine. And I'll tell you, my doctor <laughs> told me I had a superpower. He told me I had a few superpowers. And one of them is that I can have as much caffeine as I want and has no effect on my body. I have zero wow. caffeine. I have hundred percent tolerance of it. So I can have it anytime. I said, I used to think that like, well, I also learned that my brain is very positive and optimized. And I also learned that my brain has zero ADD. And that comes Ooh. in handy. Right? I always thought yeah. I was self-described and self-prescribed ADD because I thought every entrepreneur had to have it because most of them do. Uh-huh. So I'm like, I yeah. guess I have it too. But I learned I had zero ADD. So I do actually fabulous. have the capability of doing more than one thing and it's okay. So having multiple businesses is about me having relationships and empowering other people. So I could be the visionary so, and then empower yeah. them. Oh, I did it home with my husband, Gary. I did it with our brands. Now mm-hmm. I do it with other brands as well. I like set the vision and finance the vision. That's my job. You set the vision and finance the vision. Yeah, that's my job. I have high level conversations to keep the vision meaningful, impactful, important, Mm -hmm. and totally Mm -hmm. relevant to me. Mm -hmm. And then if my passion is in it, Mm -hmm. there's opportunity to soar. So that's fabulous. So I want to take a step back just for a minute. You were at Merrill Lynch, Mm -hmm. Uh, you had the accident. You recovered, thank God. And then what did you do with your life after that? So while I was in the hospital, my husband had come in and told me the story about being in Berkeley. And when he was in Berkeley, Mm -hmm. he could not work on that pad. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, well, the only way for you to get ahead is have your own hospital. So when he said the defining moment was if one of these three hospitals was available, maybe I'd consider it. And then 9-11 happened. And one of those hospitals, the doctor got stuck in Australia and 30 days later, he decided to stay. And so he came back to sell that hospital. So I and was actually- hus- You and your husband bought it. 
I was actually still in the hospital and it took my husband to tell, three days to tell me because he knew the minute he told me his life would change forever. And I remember him sitting next to me. I was still in the hospital and I remember him sitting next to me and going, I'm going to tell you this and I know our life's going to change forever. And sure enough, we put in a bid and um, ironically, about a month later is when he started because he was figuring out his life. He was getting pricing on his hospital and getting his cards in order. And I think he got like 20 or 30 bids. He had a lot of bids from, from people around the nation. That, so they were gathering bids. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And when we called in to tell him we were given our bid, Gary and I were actually, I was actually out of the hospital at that point. I was, we actually had made a far reaching goal which was we're going to the Olympics in Salt Lake City. So I was barely even walking at that point. I don't even know how we did it now looking back. And Gary was pushing me in a wheelchair some of the time. So um, we were at the Olympics. We were at the high ski jump. And I looked at Gary and I'm like, I think we should put in a bid. And we're like, okay. And we literally went back to the car. It took like half an hour for me to do my little steps back to the car. And we sat in the car and we called Dr. Harris and we're like, okay, we're going to bid on the practice. And we did. And that was um, the life changing for us because now it was a million dollars to get that vet hospital. So there's a few things I needed to do. Number one, after not working and being in the hospital, I had to be very clever on how to access capital to start being the owner of a veterinary hospital that not only cost me a hundred or not only cost me a million dollars and I had to figure that out, which I got a 10 year loan. I think it was like seven and a half percent. It was $13,000 a month. So I went to, which back then that was a commitment. Now that would be like 25, 30,000 a month. So think about your rent. Yes. You do that every month. The minute you walk. Yeah. In. That's they huge. Call it, they call it debt service. Uh, but fast forward on year 10, when I paid it off, I got a $13,000 a month raise. I was like, woo, woo, woo. I <laughs> got a $13,000 a month raise. Cause now it was my capital. It wasn't debt service anymore. I immediately yeah. invested it and built another hospital. I took that wow. and immediately leveraged and built holistic vet care and holistic vet care. Yeah, that's a, that's a big, it's a big operation now. It's, it's a global operation. This is where the moonshot's coming from, but it all started that's with that conversation in the hospital where Gary's like, I'm upset at work because I can't do what I want, which yeah. is right for the animals. And I'm like, well, the only way you can do that is if it's your own hospital. Then fast forward, yeah. the hospital became available months later because of 9-11. Fast mm -hmm. forward, action. So mm -hmm. it was September. And now here it is February. We're at the Olympics when we're actually bidding on it. Like that's how long the process was. And mm -hmm. we bid on it. And when we called him and bid on it, he said, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> wow. That's like, so wonderful. Oh, and he's like, I needed Gary. He wanted Gary as his oh. experience. He wanted oh, his wow. work ethic. He wanted his knowledge. He wanted his forward. Mm -hmm. But also mm -hmm. the person we bought it from was Dr. Harris. And Dr. Harris for 40 years was the only hospital in the Bay Area that did pets and wildlife for free that were in distress. Like if someone oh, wow. found a native bird or a native turtle mm -hmm. or whatever, he would take them in and figure out next steps. So we had mm -hmm. all these like Lindsay Wildlife Museum and all these places that he would collaborate with. But it was a cost mm -hmm. center. It cost the hospital like $100,000 a year. And what he said to my husband, Gary, is I know Lee will make sure that stays. I know Lee will make sure that that works and does not make the hospital go out of money and out of business, right? Yeah. So he knew us together would carry on his legacy. Mm -hmm. But we didn't just That's carry wonderful. his legacy. We 10 x his legacy. <laughs> we get from 3,500 clients to 25,000 in person and another 100,000. <gasps> we now have 2 million email list on our email wow. list on our email list from that's Service amazing Texas. so it's been mind-blowing what we've taken it to but it's me my marketing and my husband and his passion and putting it together and yeah. it's an idea that started 30 years ago yeah. right and so and lee I don't think the when, 18 years ago so just so you know it's not overnight mm. it's an increment and tiny habits every day tiny habits mm. Tiny habits, actually sometimes huge habits in operations, right? Huge ab habits in sales, really great sales pipeline online and in person. Thank God we had both. Because when COVID happened, we were already online. Thank oh, God we were already yeah. online. We didn't have to like scramble and learn a new skill. We were already there mm -hmm. We've been since 1998. That's why you can look mm -hmm. things up about me and see some things that 
that are there. Cause but honestly, I don't even pay attention to my own personal stuff. Like I do. <laughs> stuff. If I did, I, I can't imagine how good it would be, but you know, we Lee, are- everything that I see, everything that I see in here is just a top notch. Always. I want you to think back to when you and Gary were deciding to buy this um, veterinary practice Mm -hmm. and you knew you had to get a $1 million loan and that your payments would be 13,000 a month. How were you feeling? Were you scared? How did your husband feel? And then how did you guys take that leap and decide to do that? Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I'd already been in the market. I'd already been around business and finance. So I was already seeing the people getting ahead. And the people mm-hmm. were getting ahead were actually the investors, the people that invested in their businesses first. Then mm-hmm. they had the income streams coming in. And then they would, I would watch people put $25,000 a month in their account. And I'm like, how are they doing that? their businesses were making enough money that that was their part of the income stream and it was regular and it came in on a regular basis. So they created habits that they could build wealth. And the sooner you start on a regular basis and consistently do it, the more it multiplies. It's called the rule of 72. Based on your interest rate, how do you want to multiply your money? Based on your interest rate, how long does it take to multiply your money is the rule of 72. So depending on if you're getting a 5%, 10% or 20% interest rate, I have beautiful, amazing investments right now that are paying me 20% on a monthly basis. Wow. But you have to have access to that deal flow, you know? And so part Mm -hmm. of why I'm in these inner circles and why my businesses are flourishing and is because I'm paying attention and I'm in these inner circles and asking them, what are they doing with their money? Part is because I had Mm -hmm. the education and finance and I know how to ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things I'm doing right now, which is really fun, is I'm creating a family foundation. Why am I creating a family foundation? Because this year I made more money than I need. And so I have to look for ways to be creative, to save it for things that are important to me, right? And I had had two of my tax advisors look for different ways. So I found two of them, but one of them is creating a family foundation. I've known about it for years. And before my mindset was like, why would I want to give all that money away? But now I'm like, ooh, the more money I give away, the more I can help. Right. And then also my daughter, 16, the more that she could choose things she's valuing and she can contribute, the more she can be part of this too. So my accountant said, yeah, put $500,000 in this account. And what's going to happen is you're going to get tax credits for 250,000. And so really you're getting a 50% subsidy to put it in, but I still have to put the whole 500 in. Uh-huh. However, on paper, I'm going to get a benefit, but I'm also going to get the opportunity to give $500,000 away any way I want through my family foundation. Oh, <laughs> Anytime that's exciting. I want. Now, I don't want everyone that's on here me today saying, hey, send me- <laughs> but I will say if it's pet related and it's a good deal and it's something innovative, I do want to know about it because those are things we're interested in, in, in helping. And I'm helping people all the time anyway. This just gives me a way to help at a more structured, more win-win, yes. because guess what? If the government is giving me a tax credit or helping me to support the community at 50 cents on the dollar, that is mm-hmm. a good investment. That yeah. is, that's I excellent. Help, I can help food banks. I can help all these different nonprofits that are 501c3s. I can help them through my family foundation. I could say, here's $5,000 to do this with your community. I could, I could say, mm-hmm. help other 16-year-old girls that are in distress help 16 year old, my daughter's 16, like she gets to inspire and help other kids just like her, you know? So yeah, I love that. Oh, Lee, you are just a fountain of information and inspiration. I could talk to you all day long, but we're, we have to wrap it up. Cause guess what? I have another podcast interview coming up. So in so cl- in cl- it, it took us like three months to get our calendars coordinated because you're so popular. <laughs> Me, you're pop. Uh, you talk about Miss Popularity. I don't know anybody you don't know, and and you know that is um, your reputation is you're super smart, you're super fun, and you know everybody. Aww. Well, I'm so happy yeah. I know you, and this is such a great audience. We're so lucky to learn from you. Oh, thank you, and thank you so much for being on here. So I would love for people, not people who want to 
ask for your family foundation money. We're not going there. But people who want to learn more from you, what's the best way? Who who can you best help? And what's the best way for people to learn more about you and how they can learn from you? I love you asking that. Thank you. Well, I, I think we talked about a, a good place to connect is on LinkedIn. It's a great place to, to share information, resources, ideas, uh, give feedback. There's some articles that I've written there for entrepreneur. Forbes articles I'm writing right now will be posted there. Um, my Go Ask Lee, G-O-A-S-K-L-E-E, goasklee.com is uh, really the, you know, go there, sign up for whatever we're sending out. I think right now we're doing business tips and marketing tips. And then you'll be on our list. And when we do book launches or anything like that, we'd love to keep you informed. And right now, I just love supporting other women leaders. That's really my jam and my joy. And watching people flourish and us rising together. I'm, I'm in the Archangel Council. Um, and I love being in Archangel and Jen's in there as well. Um, and the reason we're in there is really to mentor and empower all of us together. We're all in reinvention together. We're all in a collective mm -hmm. trauma together. Everyone has yes. their own trauma. Everyone. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter. I, except for, I will say, my friends, Missy and John Butcher, who live right over there in Molokai, they're not mm -hmm. in the same trauma as the rest of us because they have disconnected so much and they have their family with them and they seem happy as can be. So I want to learn more from people like that. How do you do that? Well, yeah. they're connected from all the drama, but they still collectively yeah. know what's going on in their heart of hearts. They know we're all suffering and it hurts all of us. Even at the highest level in Molokai, having your best life, you still feel the collective sadness and sh struggle people are going through. And mm -hmm. I would recommend that people really work on their mindset first and just think about where can you feed your brain something that makes you feel like you're lifting higher, something that gives you hope? I hope this conversation has given you hope in one way or another that there's choices out there. And one of the things I'm going to leave people with is a friend of ours on the council, both Jen and I really appreciate, is a gentleman called David Nagel. David Nagel does a whole series of mindset podcasts. And he did a series of four just as COVID broke. And that was mm -hmm. my gift to a lot of people. It was a gift to my team, to myself. I've listened to him several times. I've listened, I've listened to, to all of those also. So I highly recommend, Kathy, you put those notes in here. And I know it's not even okay. going to the last Lee thing. But I, okay. I know. People, if people start with their mindset and have David Nagel, someone I trust, know, like, and trust, and on top of it, all four are free. He doesn't ask for anything mm -hmm. except listen. I think mm -hmm. number two and three, like I listen over and over again because he gives such gems on how we're in charge of our mindset and why not be in the frequency of your best self, be in the frequency of where you want to go, be in the frequency of what you can do, the, the mm -hmm. law of possibilities, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's why you and I connect so well is because we love to be in that. And that's the place, yeah. even when it's hard, we're like, how do we get back there? You know, as soon as possible. Yeah. So uh, two things uh, that I know we connect on. One is you talked about rising. The t-shirt I actually have on today, which is one of my swags, um, I'm going to send you one of these, is together we all rise higher. Together we all rise higher. I need one for my trainer okay. too. <laughs> you okay. I will uh, message with you to get your address and what sizes you want. You. Yeah. And then the other quote that I like is what one woman can do, another can do. Yeah. Lee, do you believe that? 100%. 100%. And you know, sometimes I have people come to my office and when they see things happen, that they, they go and make it for themselves. They're like, oh, you showed me the possibility and now I can do it. And I think that's what you and I do for both of our audiences. And that's why we even have podcasts and interviews and share this is because we know it's easy. And if they just are willing to look for the good and look for the things they're capable at and turn them on and make them passionate. When we all do that together, it's more powerful, you know, and you're highlighting people who are in their passion, which multiplies that passion and multiplies yeah. the opportunity, multiplies the capabilities and the access. Sometimes it's just access to the idea. The other day, someone gave me an idea then I'm like, wow, if I didn't have this conversation with you, that idea wouldn't have happened. And now I could take that idea into action and it's brilliant. But yeah, 
And if you think about it with conversation, sometimes an idea leads to an idea that leads to an idea. So when I'm saying I'm being the visionary, setting the vision and financing the vision, setting the vision means I have to be aware of all these different ideas and then pick the ones that are going to supercharge my team, make my mm -hmm. clients feel like they're seen and heard and we're giving them exactly what they want, right? You know, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. makes me feel happy at the end of the day that it was something valuable and something you know, I'm giving value. So part of it is being in an environment. My friend, um, Dr. Ben Hardy has a book called Willpower Doesn't Work. And he says the number one thing to do is change your environment, right? So that's why I'm here in Maui. And I, I shared this with you <laughs> earlier, but this is what inspires me is being here at the oh, ocean. Seeing, so beautiful. Seeing the world of possibilities. Wow. And that's Molokai yeah. over there. Right there's Molokai where my friends John and Missy Butcher live. And I'll go mm -hmm. back and see them in a few days, but uh, or a few weeks actually. But you know, just having the, the world of possibilities, being able to be in this environment. I'm glad I could share it with you today. I hope the energy of it has come through because I think um, the intention is all of you get to feel this happy too, actually. That's what it is. <laughs> I feel so happy right now. I just want to share it. Oh, Lee, you have shared it. And if anybody isn't watching this on YouTube, please go and watch at least the last five minutes here because you will not believe the view that Lee just shared with us. Aww. So Lee, thank you so much for being a guest on my podcast. It's been thank wonderful. You. It's been wonderful for me. I'm glad our team can make it happen. I'm glad that you're a rock star and that you're making things happen and helping people and supporting them. And I feel supported. So thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share her feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.